asymmetrical configurations of the arms to challenge the stability of the core and shoulders. Namaste everyone! Welcome to another episode of On The Mat. On The Mat this week, there is nobody, so I'm going to be putting myself. So what has happened is that Singapore, which is currently going through the circuit breaker measures of social distancing, and our studio being closed, and we are all live streaming classes from our homes. Before the circuit measures kicked in, I got the teaching team together to do a whole bunch of videos for us to be putting out on YouTube week by week. But we only did one month worth of videos and we did not expect the circuit breaker measures to be extended for one more month. So let's begin putting myself on the mat today. Begin your practice from a seated pose. Any seated position that you are able to comfortably maintain. Start by connecting with your breath. The regulation of the breathing. As you inhale, think about lengthening the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Maintaining that length on the exhale, guide the tailbone downwards towards the mat, finding the grounding and firmness and stability of your foundations. Inhale, there is an expansion of your ribcage in all directions. Exhale, as you pull the navel inwards towards your spine, create a firmness in the lower belly and the pelvic floor. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Next inhale, start to move as you breathe. Inhale, lifting the chin up as you roll shoulders back and opening the chest in a gentle back bend. Exhale, drop the chin down to the chest, send shoulders forwards, explore carefully, rounding your back. And then moving as you breathe, inhale. Again, arch your body. Expansion of the outer curve. Exhale. You see, drop the chin down. Stretching the upper middle and lower back. Next, inhale a bigger movement. Inhale. As you open up, also start to extend your arms upwards to open the chest and open the shoulders. Exhale with length coming forwards all the way down to the mat. With the next inhale again, open chest, open shoulders, arms overhead. And exhale with length coming all the way down to the mat. Let's do this one more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist to the left with the right hand to the left knee. And the left hand on the mat behind you, supporting a straight spine. Good. Next inhale, arms upwards again. And with the next exhale, twisting to the right, left hand, right knee, right hand on the mat behind you. Inhale and twist, sending both arms upwards. And exhale as you twist to the left, let's go slightly deeper. Good movement in your shoulders. Inhale and twist, sending both arms upwards again. And exhale as deep as you can. Twisting to the right. The chin over the right shoulder. Let's untwist the body on the inhale. Good. And on the exhale side, stretching to the left. So bringing the left forearm down to the mat, extending right arm. Inhale, bring the body back up again. Exhale, begin to side stretch to the right side. Good. Keep the bicep close to the ear and fully extend the arm. Inhale, both arms upwards again. Exhale, as you extend down to the left, you can deepen the stretch by sending the hand to the space between the shoulders and lifting the chin to gently use your head to pull deeper. Inhale, arms up for one more time. 
Exhale as you come down to the right again. Try to deepen the stretch in your left shoulder. Good. One more breath to lift and lengthen. Deep breath in. And on the exhale, let's bring ourselves to tabletop pose, which is a hands and knees position. Palms flat underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips. Inhale to arch your spine, opening the chest. Exhale, avoiding the cat as you come down to child's pose position. Rocking from child's pose to a cow pose. Inhale, look up as you lift the tailbone. And then going back down to child's pose again. Exhale. Good. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Good. Next, inhale, start to lengthen that left leg back. On the exhale, create your tuck by bringing the left knee into the chest. As best as you can, avoid the left foot touching the mat. Inhale, send it back again. And exhale, tucking that left knee to the chest. Good. And we do this one last time. Inhale to find that length. As you lift your left leg, avoid lifting your left glute. Exhale, maintain this last and final tuck. So connect with the breath. Staying strong in your tuck position for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release. Good. Taking a breath in to look up as you lift the tailbone again, arching your spine. Exhale, continue the movement to child's pose. Breathe as you move. Inhale, arch your back in cow pose. And move as you breathe. Exhale, rocking back, child's pose position. Good. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. Next inhale, now extend your right leg back. Find that length in the body. Good. Find your tuck on the exhale. Knee to chest and the forehead perhaps touching the knee. Lengthen the right leg back again. Mindful you are not lifting your right glute, keeping the hips squared. Exhale. Find your tuck again. Beautiful. One last time. Inhale. Lengthening that right leg back. And then complete with the tuck that you would hold. Nice, strong and firm engagement connected with your ujjayi. The constriction of the muscles in the throat gives a deep ocean-like sound in the breath and helps to facilitate the awakening of all your supporting muscles. That'll do. Lowering the right leg down. Doing one more back bend. Inhale. Good. And this time, rocking back to child's pose on the exhale, have your toes curled under so that you can start to lift the knees off the mat. Sending the body back to your first downward facing dog position, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a moment here to paddle out your feet, left and right heels and toes. One knee bent as you straighten the opposite leg, switching and switching, perhaps lengthening the side body by swaying the hip side to side, or moving one shoulder down towards the mat at a time. When you're ready, come up and tip toes on the inhale, bringing heels down to the mat on the exhalation. Good. Take a moment here. If you have lost your breath, bring it back. Stay with deep, long breaths. Every inhale is an expansion of the ribcage in all directions and a lengthening of the body. Every exhale as you pull navel inwards, establish a firm and stable foundation in the four corners of your hands and in your feet. Breath by breath connecting the breathing with the pose. Good. Next inhale to tiptoes. Exhale with knees to chest and looking forwards. 
Next, inhale, stepping carefully to the front of the mat. Exhale, forward bend. Come down, belly towards thigh, chest towards knee, and chin towards shin. Inhale to use your strong back muscles and lift up to standing, reaching upwards. And connecting with the breath, we bring the hands back to the mat again in forward bend. Inhale, looking up and create a straight spine. Exhale, now stepping the right foot, left foot back. Plank pose position. From plank rocking it to downward facing dog is an inhale. And from downward dog to plank is an exhalation. Work with the breath, inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, rocking forwards to plank. Maintain broadness across the shoulders. Again, take it to a downward dog on the inhalation. And you have the option here as you rock forward to plank. If you are firm and stable, explore a chaturanga, dandasana, a low push-up. Pushing it directly to downward facing dog on the inhale. And let's do this again, chaturanga. Exhale. You can just do a plank as an option as well. Push it back to downward facing dog with the length of the body. Strong, strong shoulders. Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale. Next, inhale to open to an upward facing dog. And that'll do down dog. Exhale. Straight spine, heels, grounding. Good. Breathe and reconnect if you have lost your ujjayi. Constant reminder to stay present. The sound of the ujjayi is that reminder. The sound in the breath like the ocean. Try to equalize the inhalations with the exhalations. Next inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest, looking forwards. Next inhale, again stepping to the front of the mat in a halfway lift, looking upwards. And exhale to fold in Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Inhale, use your strong back muscles to lift up to standing arms overhead. And exhale back to the mat again. Beautiful. Halfway lift, inhale. Stepping left foot, right foot back, plank pose, exhale. From plank to downward facing dog on the inhale. Good. Next, carefully lowering down one forearm at a time or both forearms together. Ensure that the elbows are no wider than the distance of your shoulders. Your hands can be closer if you feel any tightness here in the shoulders. And then from your dolphin pose, gently rock the body forwards to stack the shoulders above the elbows. You might need to walk the feet back as you do so. In connecting with the breath, Inhale, rock it forwards to plank. Exhale, rock back to open chest, shoulders in dolphin. Inhale, forearm plank. Exhale, dolphin pose. Next inhale, you can come down now. Lowering the hips down, lengthening the legs back. Stay with the elbows stacked underneath the shoulders to find your sphinx pose position. Very gentle back bend and please check that there is no discomfort in the lower back. Otherwise, maybe find more length by drawing the tailbone downwards. A feeling that you are trying to ground your pubic bone. When you're ready, reach back for the right foot with the right hand. Hold the foot from the inside. Maybe even turn the grip so the fingers face forwards the same direction as your toes. You are trying to push the heel down. Pass the side of the hip towards the mat. And keep the elbow lifted so you are experiencing a stretch on the right shoulder as well as the right hip flexor and quad. Now with the next breath, as you kick the foot back in the opposite direction, take your option, just an option here to lift your foundation elbow off the mat so that you deepen the back bend gently. Stay with the breath, we hold for five, four, three, two, and one slowly release. Very nice, very beautiful. Switching sides to grasp the left foot with the left hand. You hold the foot from the inside and you push the heel downwards. Past the side of the hip towards the mat. 
We might be circling the grip if you know how to do so. Turn the fingers the same direction as your toes and keep the elbow lifted. This is a stretch again in the left shoulder, left hip flexor and quad. Again, once you are ready, you are going to grasp the foot or the ankle and slowly kick it back to reverse this pose in an Ardha Danyurasana half bow expression. Take your option again if you wish to lift the right elbow of the mat increases the intensity of this stretch. Strong kick of that leg with a firm, firm activation of your quad. Continue to flow with your breathing. So as you hold the pose you are not holding the breath. Good and release gently coming back to Sphinx pose position. And curling the toes under and pushing yourself back, dolphin pose. Dolphin pose. Lifting one elbow at a time or both together, downward facing dog. Then with the next inhale, stepping carefully to the front of the mat for a halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reaching upwards. Connect with the breath, forward bend again, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale, lengthening. Stepping the left foot back this time, only the left foot back for a low lunge pose. Inhale, one breath. Good. Exhale, then both feet back, plank pose position. And as you go through your vinyasa, just a reminder, chaturanga or low push-up can be done with knees on the mat for less intensity. Good. Next breath, we will find a three-legged dog position on that left leg. And then tucking the knee to the chest, set the left foot down on the mat in front of you. Rise for a low lunge pose and the inhale. As the hands come down, step your back foot forward to the front. Exhale. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. Do a forward bend. Exhale. Next, inhale. Rise up to standing. Good. And come back down to the mat. Again, connecting the breath with the movement. Halfway lift. Inhale. And the right foot this time steps back for the low lunge. Exhale. Inhale, open chest, open shoulders. Exhale, step back your left foot. Plank pose. Good. If Chaturanga is not comfortable, you might also consider knees, chest, chin position. And instead of a vinyasa, you might just arrive at downward facing dog. So right leg lifts. Inhale. Right knee to chest, right foot come forward. Exhale. Arms up for low lunge. Inhale. As you bring the hands down, step forwards, both your feet to the front. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. Do a forward bend. Exhale. All the way up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Use your strong back muscles to lift. And coming back down. Good. Then take a halfway lift. Inhale. As you step Jump, hop, or float back to plank pose. Exhale, let's do one vinyasa to downward facing dog. Or take the option to arrive directly to down dog. Now with the right leg, lift to three-legged dog. Inhale, find your tuck position, knee to chest on the exhale. This is a warrior one, so ground the back heel. And on the exhale, the hands come back down, the feet step back. Three-legged dog. Inhale, come forward for a vinyasa on the exhale. One vinyasa to downward facing dog. Then lifting the left leg up, inhale. Set the left knee to the chest, exhale. Warrior one position, inhale. And then three legged dog again. Doing one vinyasa to downward facing dog. Beautiful, working with the breath. And let's stay a moment here. Connected with the effect of that beautiful flowing sequence to awaken your body. Strong back muscles or posterior chain. Good. Stay with that ujjayi. When you're ready, come up and tiptoes. Inhale. Knees to chest. Exhale. Next, inhale, walk, jump, or flow to the front. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, coming all the way upwards. Exhale, back down to the mat again. Next, inhale to halfway lift. 
and go ahead and separate the feet out about hip width distance. Slide the hands palms facing up underneath the soles of the feet. All the way so the toes go to the creases of the wrists. Pada Hastasana. Good. Stay with your breath. Lengthen the body with every inhalation, which means guiding the crown of the head towards the mat. Deepen the stretch with every exhale. Find a firmness in your leverage position, which will then help you to also decompress your wrists and oxygenate your hands. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. Good. And you can close the feet again. And forward bend. Exhale. So next, inhale up towards the ceiling. And then exhale to Uttanasana. Forward bend. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, you will only step halfway back with the left leg this time. Square the hips, that means actively bring right hip back, left hip forwards. Good. Parasputanasana, pyramid pose, hamstring stretching of the right leg. Connecting with your breath. Continuing the hamstring stretch on the right side. Good. Now prepare for your next pose by walking the hands slowly back, pressing the five fingers to the mat. Strong and firm foundation as you now start to bend your left knee. You have the option here to keep the knee tucking to the chest but the big toe touching the mat. Or if you feel firm and strong in your position, start to lift the left heel up towards the buttock to find your tuck and the foundation is on the front leg and both your hands. Humble flamingo posture. So if you need less intensity in this pose, don't walk the hand so far back and keep the front leg more vertical. And as you release gently now, find your transition. Standing split, lifting and extending your tuck leg upwards as high as it can go. And if the body is balanced, then maybe one hand to hold behind the calf of the bottom leg to pull yourself in deeper into this beautiful stretch of the body. Release by bringing the back leg forward to the front. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward bend. Good. Rising up towards the ceiling. Inhale. And then back to the mat. Exhale. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. Now step the right foot halfway back. Right heel grounding inwards towards the center line. And take time to square the hips on the inhale. And then exhale, folding. Good. Parasvottanasana. When you're ready, you will arrange the hands. You were trying to create a very stable shape, a pyramid, between the front foot and the two hands, which will start to walk back behind you. Pressing down into all five fingers and thumbs. And then with the tuck position, the right knee goes to the chest and you can keep the big toe on the mat to support. Or if you feel like lifting the foot off the mat, find your strong tucking. Good for five, four, three, two, and one, slowly, slowly release. Take your time, there is no rush here. Good. Standing split. As you lift that top leg, avoid lifting the top glute. Again, focusing on what it takes to have that beautiful squaring motion happening in the body. This is also a hugging of the legs gently inwards towards each other. And when you're ready, gently step to the front of the mat. Let's take a halfway lift. Inhale. And do a forward bend. Exhale. Inhale to rise up towards the ceiling using your strong back muscles. Exhale back to the mat. Good. Take a halfway lift. Inhale. Look upwards. 
and then deepen the forward bend on the exhale, connecting with the breath. You have your knees bent, hugging your thighs inwards for chair on the inhale, and on the exhale, wrapping the left arm under the right arm, with the fingers of one hand into the palm of the other, and carefully have the left leg cross over the right. And those of us that can, have your toes curled behind the shin to lock your legs together. Now ensure that the feet, knees, elbows, and wrists are in one vertical line. The body is not twisting. And ensure the verticality of your spine as best as you are able to maintain. Staying in Garudasana, Eagle Pose, or take the option to slowly come down. All the way down until the knees go to the chest and then trying to lower the forearms down even. Trying to touch the hand mat with your fingertips. Good. Intermediate Eagle Pose. Rising up halfway to unwrap the leg, extending your left foot back, take your time, no rush. Stay connected with your strong and firm Ujjayi breath. As you lift your left leg, you are not lifting the left glute, the same practice of ensuring the stability of your hips. From your warrior tree variation, stepping back, opening up to a warrior one variation with crossed arms. Exhale, bring your crossed arms all the way down, slightly to the left, as close to the mat as you can for the humble warrior. Humble warrior variation in eagle arms. Good. Your next position is a lizard pose. Bring both your forearms down to the mat. Keep your back knee lifted. You might want to walk the right foot to the corner of the mat for an easier practice. Stay with the right knee hugging close to the side body though and maintain the length in the right side. Now your next transition is to bring the right hand back like a Chaturanga Dandasana. The right palm as a guide is about one hand further away from that left elbow. Good and stepping the front foot back takes you to your funky forearm plank. This is a chaturanga position on the right side and a forearm plank position on the left. It's an asymmetrical arm position. Good. And then turning the body to face the right is to take the foundation on your left forearm, extending the chaturanga arm upwards. Find your side plank variation. Staying with one foot on the mat in front of you to support your side plank, keeping both feet together, legs straight. Or perhaps today you might be wanting to extend the top leg in Vashistasana number two, five, four, three, two, and one beautiful practice. Bringing ourselves down to a well-deserved child's pose and staying here a few breaths. Allowing the breathing to come back. Reconnecting with your Ujjayi if you have lost it. That'll do then. Bring ourselves back to downward facing dog to repeat the same sequence on the left side. So coming up on tiptoes, inhale. Bringing knees to chest, exhale, looking forwards. Next, inhale, walk, jump up, float. Good. Exhale, forward bending. Bend your knees, chair pose. Exhale to wrap the right arm under the left arm. And then carefully allow the right leg to cross over the left. You are balancing in the four corners of your left foot, nice and active. If you can, curl the toes behind the shin. Keep the legs hugging inwards, staying nice and vertical in the spine. Or take your option if you wish to lengthen forwards. Carefully managing the balance here to guide the knees up towards the chest and to lower the forearms down as close towards the mat as we are able to go. Good. Then from your intermediate eagle, slowly lift the body high enough that you are able to unwrap the right leg. Take your time, no rush to extend then the right leg back. 
Warrior three position. Good. Warrior three with crossed arms. And the length of the body, one straight line from the crown of the head to the back heel. Again, you might be micro bending the bottom leg. If that feels more comfortable to you. Then as you gently set the foot down behind you, inhale opening up for your warrior one variation. Exhale gently guiding yourself down to your humble warrior variation. With your cross arms to give a beautiful stretch across the space between the shoulder blades and the outer shoulders. And that'll do when you're ready. Take it to a lizard pose on your forearms. Maintain the lift of the back knee. Good. And lower the hips as low as they can go to create the stretching of the back of the front leg and the front of your back leg. When you're ready, find your funky position by taking your left hand back. And if you were to draw a line across your mat in line with the right elbow, your left hand will be slightly further backwards from that line in order to maintain a beautiful 90 degree bend on the left arm and a 90 degree bend on the right arm as well. Strong legs avoid the legs becoming lazy. Lift the kneecaps, thighs hugging inwards. Maintain length in lower back. Connect between the front ribs and hips. And when you're ready, turning to the left, supporting yourself on your strong right forearm. Extending your Chaturanga arm upwards. Finding your side plank pose or Varshisthasana. Staying here with the feet together or support to the left foot on the mat in front of you. Or if you wish to challenge yourself, grab the big toe and explore extending that leg upwards. Varshisthasana number two. With the hip high, with the chest open, and connecting with the breath. Finding firmness in your side body. Good. Slowly releasing another well-deserved child's pose position. Giving rest to the body, but in this child's pose, perhaps have your arms extending forwards instead. Good. We are going into a very gentle movement-based practice now to help you recover from that strong floor sequence. Inhale, rise up into a kneeling pose. And exhale, lengthen forwards again. Child's pose with the arms extending forwards. Next, inhale, come to high kneeling position. Stack the hips over your knees and open the chest and shoulders. Next, exhale, carefully lower the hips down as you try to send the head and arms down at the same time towards the mat. Again, inhale, open chest in a low kneeling position. Exhale with the breath, come down again, child's pose. Next, inhale is a high kneeling position. And then back down to child's pose again. And then slowly with the next inhale, lift up to a downward facing dog. And then back to our funky forearm work. Walk the left hand forward, rock, walk the right hand, <laughs> walk the right hand backwards. So that when you bend the left elbow, you come down to the left forearm and the right hand is in the correct position, like what we did earlier in plank. And here you have one knee balanced in the right tricep and you try to bring the left knee to the right as well. You can stay with the left toes touching the mat to support your funky crow, or if you feel strong, then extend your left leg upwards for a funky one-legged crow. Good, or just maintain crow. Release. Child's pose on the mat. Take a moment here. And prepare for one more movement base practice. So again, have the arms extending forwards. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, come down, child's pose. Good. Connecting with the breath, inhale to a high kneeling position, maybe a gentle back bend. Exhale, child's pose position. One more breath, inhale, expansion of the front body. Exhale, use your strong back muscles, lower down slowly. One more, inhale, rise up to high kneeling position. Good, and back down to the mat again. So with the inhale to rock back to downward facing dog. And exhale, carefully step the right hand forward. Left hand steps backwards. 
Good. With practice, you will get the correct distance as you lower the right forearm down and the left hand. Left arm chaturanga. Right arm forearm plank position. Slowly have the left knee balance over the tricep. Choose to stay with the right toes on the mat or lifting up the right leg as well. Stay with the knees together in your funky crow or extend right leg up to explore the funkies. funky one-legged crow. Good. Nice and firm engagement in the body and always in connection with your breathing. Exhale, let's rest in a well-deserved child's pose. Good. Let's continue to rest, but instead of child's pose, inhale, rising up, opening chest and shoulders. Exhale to lengthen the body forwards and stack your hips over your knees. With the arms extending forwards, allow the chest to sink downwards towards the mat and find a lift of the tailbone as you do so. And this will take you to extended puppy pose or Uttan Sishosana which will give you a beautiful stretching of the chest and shoulders. Staying with the chin on the mat, if that does not feel comfortable for you because of tight shoulders, rest your forehead on the mat or maybe turn your head and rest your cheek. You were trying to have the chest grounding. Good. Maybe even gently spreading the sit bones in this position. Stay with the breath. Good. Threading the right arm under to the left to find your beautiful, beautiful twist. You are resting with the right shoulder now on the mat. Yes, even you try crawling the left hand to the right corner. And then be mindful to lengthen the left side body by rocking the hips slightly to the right as well. Staying here in your twist will help you open the shoulder. Inhale, rise up again. Exhale, switching sides. Wrapping the left arm under and extending to the right, crawling the left hand to the left corner of the mat. Stay with your breath. Ensure the lengthening of the right side body. Ensure the stretching and opening of the right shoulder. Good. That'll do. Slowly release. Now we are going into our inversion work. So take your option here. The first option on your weaker side, perhaps, is to practice a funky headstand. You will have your head in the space between the hand and the elbow of the right forearm foundation. Keep the head close to that forearm. Your left hand back like a chaturanga. And you will lift yourself up carefully with one leg extending at a time. Good. Finding your standing split, press up. And those of us that wish might be supporting your practice with the wall behind you but ensure that you avoid inhabiting the wall. Try to move away from the wall as best as you can and only use the wall as a means of catching you in case you fall. Coming down slowly, take your time, there is no rush. Develop a strong negative here and rest. Child's pose position, correcting any wardrobe misfunctions or malfunctions that you might be having. Good, again in your Puppy pose. This time round, you might take the option to bring the hands to the space between the shoulders. That means with your elbows bent. You will find that it is a more intense stretch because it starts to target the triceps as well as your shoulders and chest. Stay with the breath. So for one last inversion practice, you might be doing your stronger side this time to explore the Pincha Mayurasana variation, the forearm stand variation, or you might repeat the headstand variation again. And those of us that wish can also be doing a funky forearm plank or repeating the arm balance pose. So find a practice that works for you. And let's begin slowly lifting up, walking the feet forwards. One leg lift as you stay strong in the shoulder foundation. Good. Trying to kick as little bit as you can. And working instead to push from your strong foundations and connected core. Stay with the lengthening of the body. Hug those elbows inwards towards each other.
and slowly release. And let's do a short backbending sequence to come out of our practice. Inhale, arms up from your kneeling position. Exhale as you bring the hands to the mat behind you, lean back into the hands and then inhale opening the chest. Staying for a few breaths here. Breath by breath, expansion into the outward curve, finding the openness in belly chest, front of your shoulders. If the neck is comfortable, even explore lifting the chin to open the front of your throat. And then final option if you wish to start to lift the hips away from the ankles of the feet. From engagement in your quads to achieve this. Good. Exhale, resting. Child's pose position. And do your next few child's poses with the knees wider apart so that you can maintain a healthier lengthening of your spine. Good. Feeling the effects of that beautiful, beautiful heart opening. That will do. Next, inhale will be a high kneeling position. So stack your hips over your knees. You can do this with the toes pointed or curl the toes under the feet. Support the back with the hands, little fingers touching, thumbs outwards in the area of the lower back. And as you send your hip forwards on the exhale, next inhale to open the heart by lifting the heart upwards and forwards as you send shoulders and elbows backwards and downwards. Those of us that are able to grab the heels of the feet, please feel free to do so, coming to the full expression of Ustrasana or Camel Pose. Holding the pose but not holding the breath, find a way of breathing easily in this position is the key to make this pose a lot more sustainable. Good, and those of us that wish might take the option to go one step deeper here. If you find that you can support without the hands holding the feet, even you might be starting to reach for the mat behind you and very, very gently dropping back, manage this transition slowly. Because you have your toes curled under the feet, you are able to push down onto the balls of the feet to lift the knees off the mat and rock the body back to a full wheel pose, coming then to Urdhva Danyurasana. And you brought yourself there, you can bring yourself back again. Walk the feet in closer towards the hands and slowly drop the knees down. Bringing yourself back to high kneeling position and then find your rest. Take rest. In a wide-legged child's pose position. Good. So when you're ready, flipping over like a pancake to lie face up on the mat. Let's do our final few poses from a supine position. Bring the knees to the chest and then find your twist. We twist by moving the knees down to the right side of the mat. Or take your option to cross your left leg over the right leg just like in eagle pose. As you twist to the right, you might want to shift the hips back towards the center of the mat to maintain the healthy lengthening of both sides of your body, and then spreading your left arm out as you roll the head to the left. Breathe with the gentle pressure of the right hand to pull the knee down deeper into this stretch. That'll do as you release and untwist, send your way back to a tuck position and then twisting to the left with your knees together or right leg crossing over your left leg. Right arm you spread, bringing the chin over to the right shoulder. Ensure the grounding of the right shoulder in this pose as your priority. Good. Very slowly, take your time, there is no rush. Untwist the body. And again with the knees to the chest, we will hold the feet with the hands. 
and separate the legs to find Ananda Balasana, happy baby posture. Please ensure that your tailbone is not lifted from the mat to maintain a beautiful straight spine. Staying here or those of us that wish might take the option to hold the feet from the inside and explore straight leg position. Straight legs to try touching the toes to the mat on either side of the body. Supta Vista Konasana, the reclining angle pose. And that'll do. Slowly release. Take your time. No rush. Coming down to your final resting pose. Arms and legs spread comfortably wide with toes outwards, heels inwards, palms facing upwards. And beautifully closing the eyes to find Shavasana, corpse pose. Staying here for as long as you need. Giving rest to the body. So thank you very much for joining me through this very challenging sequence today. Keep practicing with joy in the body and peace in the heart. And see you next week for another episode. Stay safe. And namaste.